So in this uh, screencast, we're going to look at the different types of engine inlets. So we have an inlet for a subsonic aircraft, or a supersonic aircraft, and inlets that go between subsonic and supersonic, and then we look at some um, special inlets. Okay, so the, the first one I'm going to look at is uh, the subsonic inlet. And if we just review quite quickly uh, Bernoulli's uh, theorem, we saw that um, for low speed flight, subsonic flight, the density is generally constant uh, as, as the air flows through the, the duct. And uh, if, if there's a um, constant mass, so there's one kilogram of air flowing through here, then there's one kilogram here, and there's one kilogram here. If the density is constant, then we will say that the area times the velocity is a constant. So A1, B1 is equal to A2, B2, A3, B3. So A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. So if I look at the diverging duct here, so as the air comes through area 2, it has a large velocity V2. But when it comes through uh, area 3, the area is much larger, so if I'm going to keep this at constant, so if this is increased, then this must decrease. So the, the velocity decreases. You can see that. So we have a large velocity here and a small velocity here. If the velocity goes down, at the tree, then the pressure goes up. Now when we can think about it, an engine inlet, so the air comes in to the engine and then it goes to the compressor where the air gets compressed and the pressure increases. So with a divergent duct like this, we're going to get a reduction in velocity and an increase in pressure, which is exactly what we want. So if we look at the engine inlet of a subsonic aircraft, uh, look at this section here. I'm just going to bring that out, uh, just highlight the shape. You can see it is a diverging, it is a diverging duct. Here we have it sort of exaggerated. You can see the divergent section uh, here. So with a diverging duct, as the air comes in, the velocity reduces and the pressure increases. And that's how we can get from Mach 0.8 out here to Mach 0.4 in here in, in, in the compression uh, stages. This type of duct uh, is often called uh, a piezotype duct. Uh, type intake. Um, so subsonic aircraft will generally have a petrol type intake. Okay. If I look at a supersonic aircraft, and then again, if we if we just review Bernoulli's uh, theorem, so it's supersonic aircraft. So when the air is coming in, when it's very fast, so if this is supersonic air, for the air to get through the duct. It has, to, it has to compress. And when we compress it, the pressure uh, increases and, and the density increases. So there's more mass per, per kilogram in here. So if these two things have, have increased, then the velocity has to decrease. So if, if this is a constant, so P1 half rho 1B1 squared is equal to P2 half rho 2B squared. So if this is a constant, and if this has gone up, and this has gone up, then the velocity must have, must have decreased. So what happens is, we have supersonic air coming in, the pressure is increasing, the density is increasing, but the velocity is decreasing, and suddenly it decreases to Mach 1. So we get a, a normal shock wave, so when the air passes through that, it's supersonic air, it's subsonic on this side. So once we have subsonic air, then we're into a divergent duct, as we've seen with the pitot-type intake, you know, with a subsonic flow, as the area increases, the velocity decreases, and the pressure continues to increase. So for supersonic air, we want a duct that is convergent and then divergent. Convergent to bring the speed down to subsonic levels, and then divergent like a normal subsonic flow. When it goes through the divergent section, 
the velocity continues to decrease and the pressure continues to increase, which is what we want when we feed it into a compressor. So um, with that um, in mind, here we have a supersonic intake, and we need a convergent divergent shape. So here you can see the air, let's assume it's supersonic air, it hits the intake here, and you know, we get an oblique shock wave. And the, because it's convergent, the air will continue to compress and increase uh, the density and pressure. And if those are going up, then the velocity is coming down. So if we continue until it comes to the trope here, which is a, quick, you know, a bit like this part here. And then we should get Mach 1 here. And then when the air passes through this point, become subsonic and in a subsonic inlet we want a divergent section. So we have a convergent section here and a divergent duct here. So air is coming in, it's greater than Mach 1, uh, it's coming through the duct like this, it's getting compressed, it's slowing down. At some point at the trough here we're going to get an, uh, a normal shock wave. So we're going to we're at Mach 1 here, but as the air is slowing down, so on this side it's less than Mach 1. And when it's less than Mach 1, it's subsonic air, and in subsonic air we want this divergent section. So if the area is increasing, the velocity is decreasing, and the pressure is increasing. So for a high-speed intake, we want a convergent divergent duct. Now, some aircraft... Uh, such as the Concorde, when they fly at supersonic speeds, or when they're taking off and landing, then they need to be at subsonic uh, speeds. Similarly with military aircraft. So how how do they do that? Well, they have a variable geometry intake. And they vary the geometry of the intake using these, these ramps. So they have... Uh, rams here that will control the position of the ramp, ramps. So if I take the air uh, coming in here, it's coming straight in, and this section here is a divergent intake. Any excess air then can, can, can go out through here. So we have a divergent intake. So this is for subsonic inflow, because we saw with a, sub, a subsonic flight, we need a divergent intake. When the speed increases, we go to Mach 1, the ramps drop down, and we get a convergent section here and a divergent section here. So we have our convergent divergent uh, section, and all the time the air is slowing down so that when it hits the compressor here, it will be at Mach 0.4 or below. The final type of intake I'm going to look at is um, the bell mouth. Okay, so uh, an example here is this is an engine in a in a test cell, so we're going to run it up after manufacture or, or after overhaul, and it just provides a steady stream of air into the intake. You might also see uh, a bell mouth intake on the inlet of uh, a low moving low speed aircraft like a helicopter so uh, helicopters with a, a low speed so you might see this type of uh, intake uh, on that. Okay so that's uh, there's, there are the various different types of intakes that we, that we wanted to cover. So we saw the pitot type which is a divergent duct for subsonic. We saw the convergent divergent duct for uh, supersonic aircraft. We saw the variable geometry intake for aircraft that want to fly subsonic and supersonic and we looked at the bell mouth intake for engine test cells and 